Monty, let's get started. Or you think so? Oh, gosh, I'm much louder than you are. But that's, I guess, normal. No. I'm always louder than you are. <laughs> Hello and welcome, everyone, to Monty and Thierry's cocktail hour. So this will be a casual discussion between Monty and me, but you're all welcome to attend. The reason why Monty is here, because he had the original idea for the Big Ten, at least the name. And, and the reason I'm, when I'm here is that I turned that, I mean, I worked to turn that idea into implementation, so we are probably the two people that are to blame for it. Yeah, this is, this is sort of the normal way that it works. I, I, I toss a half-baked idea over a wall somewhere and expect somebody to clean up my mess. Uh, so thanks, uh, thanks, Thierry. So we're, we're one year into the Big Ten governance change now, and maybe we should take like one minute to explain what it is because it's still confusing to a lot of people. Yes, what is it? Uh -huh. uh, so I would summarize it as uh, redefining what we call an OpenStack project. Uh, previously, we used a top to bottom approach. We kind of uh, tried to spot the important project and make them official, but uh, that created all sorts of issues. Uh, the most obvious issues is that it creates a catch-22 between being important and being official, because you had to be important to be official, but to actually be official, you had to kind of become important, and, and that created a, an, all sorts of issues. So we moved to a bottom-up approach, which um, is to define what the OpenStack community is, what it stands for, what are the processes it follows, what is its mission, and then consider that whatever is produced by that group in, in process of that mission is, by definition, an OpenStack project. Yeah, a way, to, a, a way that I often uh, say it to people is that we, we we changed uh, we changed what we're what we're defining from being what uh, what OpenStack is to to who OpenStack is. Um, we collectively are OpenStack. So by definition, whatever it is we do, whatever software we the people who are OpenStack produce is is necessarily then uh, a, a, it, it is a it is it is an OpenStack project. Um, regardless yeah. of how ridiculously named it might be or, or whatnot. And uh, obviously it's a more inclusive definition, so that means we have an influx of new projects, and that created the need to also describe better what it is we actually produce. So um, at the same time we came up with this redefinition of uh, what is an OpenStack project. We also introduced the concept of tags, which are units of information we can attach to projects to describe their position in the ecosystem. Uh, um, uh, their degree of maturity, how easy it is con to consume them, uh, how diverse the community uh, that is producing the project is, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and this is, a, this is an important thing. So the, the, the Catch-22 that, that Thierry was talking about just a, a couple seconds ago um, had us in this position where we, we, we had a process to put a thing in, like into this incubation stage, um, but but oftentimes deployers weren't really interested in deploying things that were that were in the sort of bucket of not quite ready. And so we didn't really have a good way to get a project. It turns out when you start a project, it's not ready. Like that's just life. Um, no matter who you are or, or what your intentions are or how, how it's gonna go. Um, and so we just didn't have a way to work on things to get them to the point where they were ready so that we could say, oh yeah, this is actually, we've worked on this for three years now and actually it's pretty good now. Um, we, we had this problem where we were needing to bless something uh, too early in its, in its technical development, right? Oh yeah, well, we definitely want one of these, so this one, this one seems great. Uh, we're gonna accept it into the, into the fold and, and we're all going to love it and, and say it's great. And then people come by like, that project sucks. And we're like, well, of course it sucks. It just started six months ago. Like, what are you expecting from it? Um, but that, that was because of those. So this allows us a way to actually work on things and recognize the people that are working on them as, as doing important work. Right, like they're they're doing things that we're all going to interact with, but not necessarily to have to start from a yep, this one is finished and production ready, and we're now going to add it to the OpenStack project. Um, you know, it's it's sort of a, a cart before the horse thing. So what happened during that last year? Um, this is the effect on the number of project teams uh, released to release. So the graph shows uh, horizontal project teams, what we call horizontal project teams, are teams that are working on multiple projects, so QA, infrastructure, uh, um, uh, security, release management, security, management. et cetera. 
where vertical projects are specific projects like Neutron, Nova, uh, Cinder, etc. And this is not the first time we changed the governance, by the way. Maybe, maybe you were in the earlier years of OpenStack, but you can see here in Folsom, we actually recognize that working on an horizontal project is actually a good thing. So that's when we actually said, well, infrastructure is kind of an important piece for us, and, and we should recognize whoever is working on that as OpenStack community. Um, and so that created a surge around, around the Folsom area. Then here, Monty had another of his ideas, oh, um, God, sorry. And, 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 and that stuff happened, uh, <laughs> programs. The, the idea was we should, we should bless the, uh, the goal of a project rather than the project itself. Yeah, uh, and that created a space for additional repositories to yeah. be created. We had, a, we had a governance problem there, which is that everything was structured around a Git repository, right? And it turns out that some things you might want to do might want to live in more than one Git repository. Uh, but it, it, was, it was creating a really strange, like we, we had the, long, the hardest time figuring out how to deal with, with Python Nova client. Right, because it clearly wasn't in the Nova repository, which was the project, but clearly it was important, um, and people needed it. Uh, and for the yeah, for the longest time, is this Nova? Is this not Nova? Is it whatever? And uh, it's a terrible conversation. Nobody cares. Like that's not actually like this, it's a stupid conversation to have. Uh, so we tried to get rid of that. Um, there, you, you actually, by the way, yeah, uh, I'll let you finish this. But you know, you you missed a governance change in your in your in your chart here. Uh, we'll come back to that in Q and okay. A. Ah, good. Um, Big Tent, three phases to Big Tent. Uh, the first one is when we first introduced it, um, there was a, a, a catch up on incubation. We, you must realize that we were completely stuck by the end of the Juno time frame when it comes to adding new projects. Uh, and we even had uh, requirements for incubated projects that were really hard to uh, uh, reach for new projects. So there was, uh, at the moment we, all, we, we set up the Big Tent change, all the projects that should have been incubated before kind of uh, joined and that created this surge in this initial surge during the Kilo release. Then um, around the Liberty release, it's actually the horizontal efforts that caught up. Uh, we had a lot of new things, new collaboration grounds that were enabled by the Big Tent. We had collaboration around Puppet, around Chef, around Ansible, uh, uh, and that created the really a surge in the number of horizontal efforts that were recognized as project teams. And uh, finally, the last one, the Mihtaka one, is is um, the Stackforge catch-up. A lot of projects that were in Stackforge uh, before the change now were unofficial projects, and so we had we actually encouraged uh, the project that were part of the OpenStack community but were unofficial to become official during the Mitaka, the Mitaka cycle. So yeah. those are the three steps. Be here. Because again, it was it was part of continuing to, to educate people that things were about who, who we are, right? So if you're working on something in Stackforge and you're doing things the way that we do things and you're using all of our, our processes and you're, you're, you're coming to this summit and, and, you're, and you're working on your stuff, then you're, there's nothing that's less important about you than me. Like that's, that should be that we're all collectively working on a thing. And if you happen to be working on a Git repository that I don't really care about, I'm probably working on one that you probably don't care about. So that's fine. Like we don't have to necessarily all love each other's Git repositories. Or maybe we should. Maybe we should all love each other's Git repositories. Mm. So we, ex we, we expect the curve to slightly flatten now that most of the catch up due to the governance change was, uh, was absorbed. Um, there are a number of consequences to this change. Some are good, some are, some are bad, some are pretty good, ugly, and we'll cover them. It was always a trade-off, I guess. I mean, we were, so the, one of the good things is that we were completely stuck and we are no longer stuck. And I think that's the single major driver yep. uh, around the idea is how much um, stuck we were by the end of the Juno cycle yeah. with person, the requirements a, we had. A person or a set of people are now free to decide that they want to work on a thing and without, with a, a, some minor exceptions, they don't really have to spend a lot of time convincing us that it's a great idea, right? Like, go nuts. Yeah, the requirements to become official were so high by the end of the Juno cycle that we could not really add new projects anymore. And more importantly, we couldn't drive the right behavior anymore because you could add new requirements, like, like you should have at least 95% test coverage in your unit tests, but then that would make the step to become official even even harder. Yeah. And so we would perpetuate the problem. Yeah, um, des designate in particular, I remember, had a, had a really big uh, problem with this, which is that they were right on the cusp for like forever 
of, of, of becoming official. Yeah. And the, the pushback from the TC was, you don't have enough different companies working on this. And the designate team was like, yeah, well, none of the companies are working on it yet because you, you haven't let us into the, in, into the room. And so they, everybody is waiting to see if we're gonna be the thing. Um, and, and so they're, they're all saying we're gonna jump in once you let us in the door. And we're like, we don't really wanna let you in the door until you've got more than one or two companies working on it. Uh, and, and they were rightfully quite frustrated um, with, with that. And so we can, we can reuse now tags to drive the right behavior. We create, for example, for example tags to describe that a project has support rolling upgrades and that created actually a, a, a surge in project that were interested in implementing that. So we can reuse uh, governance as a way to drive the right behavior now. Uh, the next one is more collaboration. I touched on it earlier. Uh, we saw collaboration in spaces where there were none before. Uh, we used to have like 10 different sites for uh, chef recipes or for something else. And facilitating creating project teams resulted in people getting together where they were working separate before. That's really a good act outcome as well. Yeah, and we saw like even in, in some things that had already been part of our, our ecosystem, there's a great, I think it was over the, I don't know, somewhere in Liberty or Mataka, but somewhere in this period of time, you know, we had the, the really good uh, sort of collaboration and, and cleanup between the, the fuel folks and the, and the Puppet OpenStack folks. There was like, hey, we're two different projects that are both using a lot of Puppet and we've, we've got some, some overlap here. Why don't we get to the point where we can work together on those? And that was a really, I think that was a really good um, uh, recent outcome of, of those sorts of things. And the next one is more reactivity. Uh, in support for the integration engine strategy that we have in OpenStack, trying to uh, um, come up with infrastructure solutions in general for whatever uh, technology is there. I think we facilitated in creating new project teams also helped. I'm not sure we would have Magnum today if we stayed with the old system. Yep. Um, and so that we would have, we would have really argued for a very long amount of time about the about the feasibility of it. Is this really a thing we want to do? Is whatever and no, you know do it and then it's there and then people are like excited about it and something else might be something that there and it turns out that people aren't excited about it and that's okay too. We, we, we need the, the flexibility to be able to experiment and try a new thing and have the users either be interested in it or not be interested in it is, is a much better way to be driven by our, 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 our consumers and our operators um, to, so that they can let us know the things that they like and don't like by using them um, and we don't have to have four years worth of arguments about whether, you know, DNS is a good idea. Um, you know, just make it, uh, and it'll either, it'll either be popular or it won't. Um, the next one is competition. I said we enabled more collaboration, but we also actually enabled competition between projects. It used to be a program would own the space, like monitoring, for our example. Uh, and, and so anyone that would want to prove that they can come up with a better solution or any project that would not fit the bill would stay there forever. And I think we have at least a mechanism for replacing projects and or having multiple projects addressing the same problem space now. And I think it's a good outcome as well. Yep. I agree. Although just for everyone out there, we, we don't necessarily want everyone in the world coming up with their, their, their own new uh, from scratch uh, compute implementation. Uh, so competition, you know, within reason. Let's let's not do that other thing. I mean, unless it's really good. The last one is that um, it kind of forced us to document what we meant by by behaving like an OpenStack project because before it was a bit of an oral tradition between old timers that were like sharing good stories around uh, campfires. Wait, um, can we set a campfire here? I, that I would ask, be awesome. Ask, but it how many? How much trouble would we get in if we set something uh, on fire in this room? Uh, it's just Texas. Ah, it's a big tent. I should just try it and see if people like it. <laughs> so yeah, it <laughs> might not be popular. <laughs> we, we ended up uh, uh, kind of having to document that now, and and we worked on 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 that. And uh, the result is called the project team guide, and it's kind of elaborating on the four opens that were the structure of the uh, principles of, of OpenStack into more uh, more of a detailed step by step. What does it actually mean to um, behave like the OpenStack way? Oh, there's another one. No. Focus. Yeah. Focus. Yeah. Paradoxically. What does focus mean? Well, do we have that? Yeah. Somehow. A oh bit. God. It's it's weird. a paradox. It we as as we added more projects, it it actually helped us to uh, focus on the core infrastructure pieces. Yep. Um, the integrated release was already too big 
for us to distinguish between between the very basic things and and the layers above it. And I think we are starting to see we, we can actually focus on a smaller subset of projects without getting into problems with other integrated projects that yeah. weren't part of it. Yeah, that's the, the part of the part of the, the real issue there um, is there's, you know, we, we can all sit around and, and argue what, what is IaaS and, you know, is, is, is this IaaS or is this IaaS plus or is this moving into the PaaS layer and we could, I mean, we, the, it would be the world's most boring conversation, but like we could, we could try and make a taxonomy of that, which is kind of the world that we were starting to get ourselves into. That doesn't actually solve anybody's problems. You know, uh, defining whether a project is, is, is a, an IaaS or not an IaaS project is, ah, you know, it's it's the why there's reporters and stuff like that out there to, to write articles. Um, uh, but but because we only had one bucket to put things in, right? We had the integrated release, so it meant by definition we were by by accepting effort that people might want to use. We were we were we were creating this this single sized thing, right? So so we were starting to imply that that you you. If you wanted to deploy OpenStack, clearly we were expecting that you definitely wanted a database as a service, right? And you definitely wanted Hadoop as a service. Like those are things that were important to you. And there's other people that are like, you know, I don't, I, those aren't, those aren't important to my use cases. I, I don't want them. And we're getting really frustrated that we we're, we're all of a sudden trying to, it was we were implying to operators that they needed to 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 install all or nothing of, of this kind of growing giant uh, bit. I think it's pretty clear to people now that we're not, I hope, uh, I hope you're not thinking that, that we're, we're trying to tell you that you should install literally every OpenStack project or we don't like you. Um, that's, that's, not, that's not the case and it's not reasonable. Um, it, it turns out that, that choice and flexibility are good things. So there were a number of good outcomes. There were also a number of bad outcomes. No, that's I'll perfect. Just skip the first one because we cover it afterwards. Uh, single vendor. Actually, we don't place any requirements on corporate or organizational diversity in in uh, before we accept uh, project teams on the big tent now, and we kind of hoped that being in the big tent would naturally result in uh, uh, more diversity to be brought to projects. But actually, some projects are single vendor and stay single vendor, and. I mean, we basically provide collaboration resources to uh, uh, efforts that are 90% driven by a single company, which uh, could be seen as a waste of resources. Um, but we we still live in a in a in a world where we hope that that project would get more diversity. But we could have the discussion of cleaning up the most uh, single vendor project that don't get more diversity. Yeah. I guess. You know, on on the other hand, and this is a this is a um, there's. So the, the downside to having single vendor projects, right, is the, the theory that, that the, the company that happens to employ the, the people who are working on that, on that project might uh, have a change of heart. They might decide, I, I, don't, really, I don't really care about this thing anymore. Uh, it's, it didn't drive as much revenue as we thought, it, you know, whatever. And our product manager who was doing that, you know, just, you know, lost a whole bunch of money gambling in Vegas, so we're gonna we're gonna cover it by by canceling this project, whatever the the thing is. Um, and so it's it's theoretically sort of at the at the whim of of that of that company uh, and that. Um, on on the flip side, uh, there's oh sorry, and it also implies that the people working on on an open stack project are necessarily uh, driven by or controlled by the company that they work for. And there's a another panel tomorrow about 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 balancing employer need and, and upstream needs and all of those sorts of things. And it turns out that the reality is a little bit more complicated than that. Um, you know, uh, a, a company ceasing to have interest in funding a project does not always mean that that project uh, all of a sudden uh, uh, ceases to have developers working on it. In fact, sometimes new developers that you weren't expecting to exist uh, pop up out of the woodwork, and they're like, "Oh, hang on, wait. We were using that. We weren't really develop. We weren't really contributing to it because it was going fine. But it's really important to us. Uh, so we're going to put some developers on it. Um, and we've we've in fact seen that in the last year happen uh, for, from exactly one of those scenarios. So it's a, it is a bad thing. We have seen, or it's a potentially bad thing. But there's, uh, as with a lot of these things, it's. It's not necessarily a black and white. Like there's some, there's definitely some areas of gray. Yeah, this uh, is the bad. This is not the ugly yet. Ah. So the the other bad aspect is there is still a lot of confusion due to all those new projects and the communication around them. I think it's mitigated now by the project navigator, but I think a lot of more efforts need to be made to make that more consumable by someone new to the 
OpenStack collection of projects, making it simpler to figure out what, what is what. Um, I don't know if you it, yeah, it, uh, it, it's also, we, we may be in the middle of, of OpenStack governance thinking uh, for, for good chunks of, chunks of our day, Thierry and I and, and, and some, some of the others. Um, it's possible that some of you out there may not spend 95% of your time thinking about the intricacies of OpenStack project governance. Uh, I mean, it's a weird choice. I don't know why you would think about anything else, but um, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll concede that that might be a, a choice that you might make in your life. Um, uh, and, and so the fact that now we are a software project that produces apparently people um, rather than software uh, might, might seem confusing. <laughs> um, uh, we should ship people. Like, yeah. Can we put people in boxes and send them to people? In Wait, no, that's a bad idea, can. isn't it? Yeah, is that what containers do? Yeah, yeah. Neat. <laughs> I've learned what containers are now. <laughs> So oh God, this is not good. Yeah, the, right. the last one is. Are you sure this isn't the ugly section? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the last one is uh, that, and that's one I didn't anticipate. I anticipated most of the other consequences, but not this one. Um, actually, we kind of require p projects to behave in the OpenStack way before they can join now, and so sometimes there is an established project has their own mailing list, has their own bug tracker, has everything set up, and we before, and they want to join OpenStack for, for some reason. And we don't have a good answer to them because uh, we first require that they drop their mailing list and adopt ours, drop whatever bug tracker they were using, use Launchpad, and then maybe we will, maybe they will pass the bar to get accepted. So it's a hard sell to ask them to drop everything they've been doing successfully so far, mm -hmm. behave like this for like two or three months before we can, us, decide if they're behaving like an OpenStack project. And we've had a number of, of established projects that could I mean hesitated to join us due to that. Yeah, and it's a it's a it, it it's it's eased the thing for the people who from the beginning they're like, oh yes, I, I am already in the OpenStack ecosystem and I have a new idea and I want because I really like the way that, that operating the OpenStack ecosystem works, I clearly want to start doing my thing there. And there's other people who maybe didn't have that thought. They they may just sort of be over over somewhere else and um, and and realize, oh wow, actually I kind of seem to be filling a a need that OpenStack has, and maybe we should just you know uh, uh, collaborate in that way. But we're we're pretty we're pretty adamant that you that you do things in the in in, in some particular ways, and and we're not really gonna. We're not really going to budge on that, um, so it, it is a it is a it is a tough sell there. Well, it's part of the it's a consequence of saying this is produced by the OpenStack community. If you're yep. not part of the OpenStack community in the first place, it makes it more difficult for you to exactly to uh, add your code to it. Yeah. So ugly now. Uh -oh. uh, um, yeah, maintaining our identi identities. We created a lot of silos in the process of adding all those project teams, and it's extremely difficult for the few people that are watching over the governance to try to keep track of uh, everything that's going on in every project team. So um, uh, maintaining the identity, which is central now to uh, what, what is an OpenStack project across all those different projects actually proves difficult. And, and this is, I mean, this is one of the reasons why we're considering uh, changing the event layout as well, is to uh, make sure that we we as a community spend more time exchanging together rather than force people to go in their own corner and, and their own mid cycle and, and yeah. come up with something there. Yeah. When there are four or five projects, then uh, a, a, you know, a small, set of, small set of people can kind of you know, check in on them, see how they're doing, see what somebody might need help with and whatnot. When there's you know, 70, uh, I, I, can't, I, I, I cannot stand up at a whiteboard and, and from memory list for you all of the OpenStack projects anymore. Um, I, there was a period of time where I could do that, but I would always miss one, and I'd have to think about it for a second and be like, ah, what was that? What am I missing? Oh, Nova, right? That's in there. <laughs> um, uh, but but yeah, it's it's it, it's trickier, and and it's also we've we've always had sort of a consolidated approach to. Th a com approach to doing things, and there's there's almost always in every project like one thing that that project wants to do a little bit differently, and and it's it's easier to sort of interact with that with the folks from that and say, okay, well I hear what you're saying, maybe we can maybe we can 
you know, expand how our, like, oh, that's a great use case and we hadn't really considered that, so that's something we'll, we'll expand and have be part of everybody's world. Or, mm, yeah, that's actually not gonna work out because in aggregate and scale, that's gonna, that's gonna be a problem. But again, if we can't touch in, touch base with everybody uh, from, a, from an interpersonal basis, it becomes much more difficult to have those conversations on a, on a, on a collegial level uh, and it starts to become more of, no, you're just gonna do it this way. Uh, and I don't ha actually physically have time to talk to you about why, right? I, I don't have time to convince you that you are going to, to follow this particular rule. And that's, that's not a really great experience um, for people. Whereas in theory, if, if the identity itself was carrying along, then it, it, would, it, would, it, would, it would come as a matter of course for the people in those, in those projects that they would, they would automatically choose to, to, to follow a thing. And that, that's a really tricky thing with a lot of projects. Yeah, another ugly consequence that we kind of need to address now is uh, the limits of the tent. And it became apparent during the last cycle where two projects were uh, actually proposed and did not get the usual consensual answer because we, we didn't really have a good answer. Um, the one was uh, the Poppy project and the other was the Tacker project. And uh, Poppy was rejected seven against six and Tacker was accepted seven against six. And that's not I mean, it's not normal. Like yeah. that's usually we we we're all like, oh, it, it, it's it's for most of them in the past it's been like, yeah, that's n I mean, nope, uh, or of course that that makes to perfect sense. And these were these are actually really really um, not easy conversations because they got into some really sort of existential questions about about what what we're doing and 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 very specifics on you know. On how uh, you know how these are how these are helpful or hurtful or whether these uh, you know like a, a a service that's going to interact with with uh, existing APIs that are out there that are themselves not not free um, is is that a thing that us having a thing that interacts with those um, uh, in increases the openness in in a way that 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 helps our operators or is that a thing where we're essentially doing uh, you know, open washing on top of on top of things that, that aren't, and that's that's not a, there isn't an easy cut and dry answer to that. That's a, that's a really that's a really intricate and involved conversation uh, to have, um, and I'm I'm glad that we're, we've had some of those, but it's also not not always the most fun thing to have because uh, you know you've well, got people trying to solve a problem, and and there's there's real things we have to dig into. Um, well, in we to kind of have to have that discussion outside of the pressure of a specific mm -hmm. project. Those are two different two completely different cases, but we need to ha basically have the answer already before we start considering those projects. Yep. So I think one of the things we need to do during during this cycle is to have the discussions around those two edge cases and try to come up with a yes or no answer that we can all agree to so that yep. when the project comes, we can actually have a consensual response to that. Yep. So that actually might be, that might be good rather than ugly. There's it's, it's all good. It's, it's all good, all of these things are actually all good. Cleaning up the tent. Um, that's mm -hmm. Another ugly consequence, I think there are a number of corner cases, projects that go nowhere, uh, half dead projects or completely dead projects um, w that we accepted in good faith, hoping that they would uh, grow and, and improve and have more contributors that are not going anywhere. And keeping them in the tent is actually tainting a bit the rest of the, it makes the tent smell a bit, yeah. uh, <laughs> like, like death. <laughs> and <laughs> And so we will probably have to have those discussions about removing some projects out of the tent during this cycle. I'm not supposed to keep the dead animals in my tent? No, I'm that's thinking? you, the smell. Oh, that's me. Okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> um, but this is another one I, th I think is, is also, because um, I'm Mr. No Black and White Answers, um, I, I think there's also some good things about, about this, even though it might be ugly and it might cause us to have some, some unpleasant interactions um, with some of our friends. Um, but we we have never been able to figure out up to now how to kick something out of OpenStack once it's in. Um, it's, it, we've had mild discussions about it a couple of times in the past and, and it's just gone nowhere. Um, and, and so actually in this case, we, I'm hoping that as we go through this process, it will not be pleasant, but that we can actually start to figure out how to say, you know what, this isn't working out. You know, it's not you, it's me, whatever that is, but like th that's actually a healthy thing to do if we're talking about um, a, a long-term, you know, 
in, in the first three years of, of OpenSec, it doesn't really matter that much, but clearly we're around for the long haul uh, at this point. I'm, I'm not sure if you've looked around this place, but uh, there's, there's a bunch of people here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that we're, we're probably gonna be seeing OpenSec clouds for, for many years into the, into the future, right? So, so actually shepherding this, not just for today, but for the, for the future as well is important. So being able to do this is, is an important thing that we, we have to learn. We, we, we have having, <laughs> that we have never done it, <laughs> makes, me, makes me pretty sure that we're not going to like it the first time we do it. Well, it's, it's a lot less costly to do it now. It, uh, it used to be very costly because it involved renaming repositories. And so whenever you removed something, you would not re-add it like the next day, obviously. Now that it's, it's almost just like a, a config file change, it's really easy to remove a project from the official list and make them unofficial. They can stay on the OpenStack infrastructure, they can give keep their Git repositories, they can be revived and re-exist and then re-added. I mean, it's not like definitive in any way. Yeah, this, this actually reminds me, of, uh, this just came up a little bit yesterday in a, in a different conversation um, uh, and, and possibly should have said this in the, in the early, very early slide about what is, what is the, the big tent. Um, uh, but just for, to, to be really, really crisp and, and clear for anybody who is uh, still confused about some of these things. Um, just because a, a, a Git repository exists in, in the little OpenStack namespace, so it's OpenStack slash foo, that does not mean it is in the big tent. That does not mean that there's anything official about it. Uh, being in a Git directory is, has absolutely no meaning. Um, uh, we, we, have a, we have a nice YAML file in our, in our governance repo uh, that lists the things that are in, in the tent, right? Like it, 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 that, is, that is where meaning becomes ascribed to a, to a project and it can be varied and, and richer than we, we stuck it into an organizational bucket uh, of, of Git repositories. Uh, again, you. Git repositories are, are artifacts. They're not, Im they're not important things and neither is We have so. eight minutes left. What? including Wait, questions. Are you saying that we've been rambling? Yes. Me on the stage? That's very and, shocking. And we did not cover any of our next challenges now. Dang it. All like, right, maybe like, we should talk faster. Yeah, we, so Big Tent, we did it. Uh, and now what's next? I mean, we're always looking into the next governance change that will be necessary to address new challenges. Our next challenges, you will have to pick some. I mean, we can't cover everything. Uh, Interoperability yeah. is one. Um, obviously, we added it to the mission statement during the last cycle. Yep. Um, I don't know if you want to speak to it. I, I, I as, as a person who works on this uh, day in and day out, I, I think this is a really important one. So, uh, so, so um, no, we, but I don't believe we have a really great answer for it yet. The, the, the DEF core and, and REF stack projects are working at it from sort of, sort of one direction of describing what is, uh, what of the existing things that exist are interoperable. Um, but us driving design and, and decisions to increase the interoperability of things, I think, is is a is a is the the other side to that coin that we've got to do. Yeah, we also have end user experience also added to the mission statement more obviously uh, because it was conspicuously absent. Yeah, I, and I I would argue that these two are 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 very closely related to each other. Um, uh, the there's a balancing act between between facilitating deployer choices uh, and operator choices and um, and having those seep out of the of the abstraction layer to the end user um, and usually uh, when when we get it wrong we've given an exceptional amount of flexibility to the deployer and the end user is stuck holding the the ball of complexity uh, and I would really like to see us um, us take care of the user by taking care of those those complexities for them um, is, is sort of where I'd like to see us get with that. And there is also addressing both ends of the use case spectrum. We have a, a community that is, uh, I mean, anything that gets into OpenStack is pushed by someone, by a human, and that human is driven by mostly the use cases of the, of the organization that is working for. And that addresses quite well the middle end of the spec, the, the middle of the spectrum, which is like medium-sized private cloud stuff. Uh, not so much the massively scalable and not so much the really easy to implement scale. And we as a community need to drive towards those ends because they will not be naturally uh, emerging from the dynamics around our community. And that's a that's challenge I think we need to think about how to drive those priorities even if they don't emerge naturally from the contributor demographics we have. Yep.
and this one is in euros. Yeah, um, yeah, because this is this is the other thing, right? Like we're all of this has been about facilitating grassroots, distributed, federated development, right? That 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 teams of people can arise and they can kind of do whatever they want uh, because uh, because that's a, that's a really good way to. To, to get parallelism, right? You get a lot of a lot of bandwidth by by parallelizing things, um, and, and we all know that because we all work on massively parallel systems, right? Um, uh, but but without coordination and without without forethought and and design, um, that can that can very quickly just become uh, utter chaos. Um, and uh, and so as we've we've now very effectively facilitated our ability to massively parallelize our, our development efforts, uh, we, we kind of need to come back in and figure out um, the, the 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 central coordination part and the and the forethought and design part, right? Which doesn't mean necessarily just telling everybody that that, that they're wrong, but we've we've got to have some some overall holistic um, uh, vision or design of of how all of this fits together and what what using an OpenStack cloud should be, right? Not what it is it today, not what can you eke out of it, but like if if I were to draw a picture of the perfect OpenStack cloud, what what would it be? And, and that we all know that, and that every, all of this parallel development effort can actually be in its in its own way and through its own freedom, actually, it's at least tangentially getting towards something that that ultimately looks like. Uh, uh, that that perfect uh, that perfect ideal uh, cloud because um, right now I, I think that we have lots of people uh, driving towards lots of visions of perfect clouds um, uh, they just not all of those versions of perfect clouds are the same thing um, which is and, yeah, fun. that ties into the next point which is how do we uh, manage to do cross project work we've optimized a lot of the structure and the last a lot of our events around uh, vertical silos and now it's difficult for us to push any type of change across a number of projects and how we will be able to address that in the future is, is part of our next challenges. Yep. And, and yeah, the last one is rethinking the design summit because those are not really um, productive anymore and so there is a discussion going on right now on how to best uh, um, encourage those new challenges like solve interoperability issues, cross-project work, overall technical design, uh, and how do we change our events in a way that, that helps in that direction yeah. rather than and, and also like there's there's a there's an immense number of really interesting people here at this event today and and there's there's a bunch of interesting content um, and at the same time we're we're attempting to in parallel also run a an event where we where we design and plan the next version of of the thing right and that's when you have 7500 people coming here for 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 this um that's that's maybe it's maybe not the best use of of the of the time of the people who are who are baking this to be over in a corner separated from all of the the you know it's 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 kind of r rare that that we're over here on on this side presenting things right and that that should we should be able to free up to both be able to present things that we're working on, but also to be able to listen to other people's presentations about how they're using this in the field. Like I usually at these events do not have time to go and sit in people's talks about their deployments, right? Because I'm I'm over in the other event, uh, in the other in the other building, uh, doing things. So so hopefully we can we can get the right balance so we can do all the design work we need to do, but also get to participate and see what cool things people are doing with the software we produced, right? Like it's, like I'm always hearing third hand, oh, did you see that talk at the summit? And I'm like, no, we didn't see the talk at the summit. Like they did this really awesome scalable thing. And I'm like, cool, that would have been neat to have seen, um, you know, but. It's, it's also design. about having the time to listen to people rather than being on between two sessions and running. Yeah. I, well, I have a lot of people trying to corner me during this week and I just like don't listen to them and just run. Yeah. And that's a horrible experience for them. That's a bad outcome for us as a yeah. group uh, because we're, we're not ready to listen. Um, we have a time for our, ex our extensive Q&A session of one minute, <laughs> one minute and a half. So there, I, it looks like there's a couple of microphones out there. If anybody has uh, questions for us that we did not cover, ooh, there's a person waving uh, hey. through the. It looks like an Adam. What's up? Hey, uh, how you doing? The networking or the Neutron Stadium? Yeah, that's still a thing in the tent. It seemed like it came in before the big tent was around and came in. And on some of the spec reviews or the reviews going in, uh, applications for new projects, it was there's some contention coming from the networking. 
So Ryan that's yeah. That's an excellent question. Yes. Yeah, uh, um, Kyle so and Armando still. Part of yeah, part yeah. Hey, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> part of the uh, of the project team, we basically said that uh, um, once a, pro a team is approved, they can have the repositories they want, and that the Neutron Stadium built on top of that, and and you had a number of projects join that. Uh, but at some point, the team that was approved was no longer uh, completely confident with, I mean, the code that was developed was actually developed by separate sub-teams, and that drove a new change that you can... We look at that to the community, Newton is a software project, I mean, and it's, I mean, assimilating the tent with the stadium, it's a bit of a, a leap, I would say. So, and I mean, us as a Neutron core team sort of lost control of how all the various bits and pieces were fitting together within the Neutron uh, smaller ecosystem, if you will. So. Uh, to answer to that person's question is that we, we, we've recognized that and we're trying to get to a solution and especially at this summit we're having a session on Wednesday, uh, no, Thursday morning, I think. Don't trust me, look at the schedule, <laughs> even though I put it together. And uh, we'll try to get to the bottom of it. Um, I, I make it my mission to, to, you know, to get to a final resolution before I, I decided that I no longer want to run SPDL because it's, it's an enduring exercise. <laughs> And we're out of time, which means we can take one more question. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Well, thank you everyone Sweet. for listening to our fireside talk. Sweet.